Can I get your picture? Uh. All right. And then, of course, I need a selfie with you. All right, say hi to the world, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming to my WordCamp talk, which is not a TED talk. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about HeroPress, success stories, uh, and what success means, and what it means to you, and what it means to me, and, and each of us. Um, I have a few, just a few quotes to start us off with. This is Thelma. She's from Zimbabwe. And she came up to me at WordCamp Europe in Porto and said, writing my hero press essay changed everything. I said, well, tell me more. She said that she ended up being a release cohort, a coordinator cohort for WordPress 5.6. Um, she got a job at Automatic. She, everything changed after that. This is Leo. He's from South Africa. Um, sometime after writing his Hero Press essay, he decided that he needed to be done on this earth. Uh, and other people decided otherwise and brought him back. And he attributes his return to the world and life and family to the WordPress community. Uh, his friends around the world gathered around him and said, we, we need you to stay with us. But first, some of you may be wondering, what is HeroPress? HeroPress is a blog. At its most fundamental, it's just a blog. But we collect stories from people all over the world uh, about how they've leveraged WordPress to make their lives better. And there's a, a wide variety of, of ways that people have done that. Um, there are single mothers working at home and not putting their kids in daycare. Older folks on their fourth career uh, people in repressed economies making much more money than they used to. Uh, there are just a, a thousand different ways people have used WordPress to make their lives better. Um, we have nearly 250 essays now. It's eight years this month that HeroPress has been around. We have 27 languages. And I've only been doing more than English for two years. So there, there's a lot more than that. Um, we have equal numbers, men and women, right now. It's 50-50 it's exactly, uh, with a few others as they choose. And we have essays from 59 different countries. Check out that map. That makes me happy. If uh, anybody knows anybody in Algeria, Kazakhstan, or Mongolia, I'd like to hear about it. <laughs> But how do we define success? This talk has caused me more time awake at night thinking about it than any other talk I've ever given. Because what is success? This, I mean, this is success stories of hero press. Is it the success of hero press? Is it the success of the people? Is it, what is it? And I, I thought long and hard about how we define success. One of them is making our own lives better. This is Tremi. Uh, Tremi, are you here? Right there. That's Tremi. He's from Meghalaya, India. When I met him, he was a school teacher. And he said, how do I become a web developer? And I said, what do you know? He said, HTML and CSS. And I said, you should pick up a little JavaScript. And, and now he is a full-time web developer because that's what he wanted to do. Making others' lives better. This is Mark Andrew. You'll note that his place of residence is a skateboard. You see that board in his hand? That's where he lives. He has a 30-liter backpack, and he skated 5,300 5, kilometers across the United States, living out of a little backpack, a tent, and traveling on a skateboard. As he traveled, he would meet good people, people who took care of him, took care of others, um, just, just good people. And he said, do you have a website? I said, no, I don't have a website. And he said, I'll build you a website, and I will host it for you for free. And so now he hosts several dozen websites for people all across the United States. And you may notice a little 30-liter backpack isn't going to hold a lot of equipment. He doesn't own a laptop. He builds all those websites on his Pixel 6 phone. So have you ever used Gutenberg on a phone? 
That's what he does. And he doesn't, like, he's never used WordPress on a laptop. Finding joy in the journey. This is Jitendra. He grew up in India, went to New York for school, and enjoyed it, and thought, you know what? I need to get back home. I want to go. And chose to use WordPress to get, start a new career in India. Um, he, I think he was doing law in New York, and he said, I don't want to do that. So he went back to WordPress, and WordPress allowed him to move anywhere he wanted, and he went home. So those three things, finding joy in the journey, doing, uh, making our own lives better and making other lives better, I think those are some of the successes of WordPress, WordPress, I don't know, people. It's our, all of our successes. But there's some common ground amongst all of them. One of them is self-determination. Each of these people decided they wanted something different than they had. Whether it's to live somewhere else, do something else, be anything else. It's just the decision, I don't like what I have now, I want something else, I'm going to try. Free software. This is WordCamp, it's about WordPress, but quite honestly, they could have done this with any free software. Drupal, Joomla, PHP, React, all of the free softwares. The, the ability to download something from the internet and change it and build it and, and do what you need to with it is one of the fundamental elements of the success of, of our modern society. And then remote work. The ability to work from where you are and make wages from someplace else is world changing. Um, I, I work where I work at home, in my, at my desk, in my apartment. But my employers, I haven't worked for an employer in my own city in 13 years. Um, Trami lives in northern India, and, but his employer is in Pune. Um, the, you, the, the ability to have remote work is common amongst all of these abilities to change our own lives, change others' lives, etc. So, Originally, this talk was just going to be a bunch of stories, because I have stories all day long. I could talk into the night, and I only have 30 minutes. So I have a couple of great stories, and then a couple of um, more foundational stories, I think. I want to talk to you about WordCamp Crazy. Is Asif here? No? OK. Asif's at WordCamp. He's out there somewhere. Um, that's Asif there on the right. Left. That's uh, Muhammad Adnan. So Asif is from Bangladesh. Muhammad is from Pakistan. And they met, uh, I think, at WordCamp San Francisco 2014. And Asif was quite wary because uh, I assume most of you know the history of Pakistan and Bangladesh. Well, Asif was very surprised to learn that Adnan did not know the history of Pakistan and Bangladesh. They don't teach it in Pakistan because they don't want that memory. And so they, they talked. They talked long and deep. And they learned about each other's culture. They learned about each other's history. And they became very good friends. And they started a company together. And then they started going to word camps together and then bringing friends along. So before too long, uh, it's a Facebook camp, a group called We're Camp Crazy. Before too long, there's this group of Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, and some Indians all traveling together in a group going to word camps around the world and just growing and learning together and becoming friends and erasing generations of, of yuck. And uh, at, at some point, Asif's father said, I'd like to meet your Pakistani friends. And it was a big deal because he was there in 71 when everything was horrible. And just the idea of, of that growth, that reaching out, that stretching. Now, HeroPress had nothing to do with this. 
Uh, I just happen to know these men. They're both on essays. They're both on herobus.com, and you can read about that. Um, but it was WordPress that made this happen. Um, has anybody here ever contributed to WordPress? Yeah, so... so <laughs> He asked me, was there going to be tears? <laughs> I said, yes. So um, this all happened because WordPress exists. WordPress exists because you made it. You did this. And I thank you. So now I'm going to talk about that guy from Bangladesh. And that's how you're going to get to know him. Um, I was told this story by a friend of mine. Um, this young man... Grew up, became a WordPress or a web developer, and got married, had some children, lived in a very small village in Bangladesh, and was not making enough money to survive. He couldn't feed his family. So he moved to Dhaka alone and left his wife and children back home. And he worked all the time and sent all the money home and lived as poor as he could so that he could send more money home. And then he got a job with a WordPress company, an SEO company. Um, I will not tell you their name, but it rhymes with toast. Um, and they have a policy of paying positions the same no matter where they are in the world. And so very suddenly he was making Dutch city wages in Bangladesh. And so he was able to move home. And now he supports most of his extended family in his village because of WordPress, because of remote work, because of free software, because of good people making good companies with good policies. But those stories are rare. I mean, the great stories, that's one of the things that makes them great. They're, they're kind of rare and special. The most frequent stories are much more common and they're foundational. They're the ones that really build everything. So I have some quotes here. There's power in the asking. I, I said to my friend Allie, who's right there, I said, what, was, what, did, what did writing an essay do for you? What changed? And she said, it made me feel like someone cared about my story. Like I mattered a little bit more in the grand scheme of things. It helped me reevaluate where I came from and where I was going. And it helped a lot with the feeling of gratitude. Now, Allie was already using WordPress. I met her at a WordCamp. She was speaking. She was in the community. But after writing an essay, because someone cared, someone reached out and said, hi, welcome to WordCamp. Thanks for coming. She became part of us, a part of the family. Michelle Frechette. Michelle here? Nope. She's out there. Power in the asking. I said, I said, Michelle, what changed for you? She said, it made me feel like a greater part of the community. Accepted. Seen. I wrote it before I was widely known in the community. Many of you probably know Michelle. She's, she does a lot. Um, I didn't know her when I reached out. It, I think it made me feel more legitimate and less like I was outside looking in. There's the power in the asking. When you say to someone, hi, tell me your story. I want to know who you are. I want to know where you live. I want to know how you feel. It matters. Leo. Remember Leo? He attempted suicide. When I asked him, he sent me this out of the blue. I didn't even ask him. He said, I remember when you first got in contact he says, you talked me out of, or <laughs> I felt unqualified and confused as to why anyone would want to know my little story. Everyone says that. 100% of the people I've ever asked to write a story said, oh, I don't have a fun story. I don't have a good story. Nobody cares about me. And they always do. People who fall in love with the community build more community. I reach out to you. You reach out to someone else and it spreads, it grows. This love is not limited to WordPress, but helps us raise our children, treat our spouse, and love our neighbors. WordPress helped me raise my children. 
It taught, helped me teach my children to love other people, to love all of you, to go out and reach out their hand and say, hi, I, I want to know you. And that extended community builds more community, changing the world. I'm running out of time. Your Press is a work of art, and its people are its brush strokes. Every new person that comes in is one more little brush stroke, one more little happy little tree, if you get the reference. And like all art, it impacts people who impact others, and it grows, and it spreads, and it moves on and on and on and on across the world, across the cultures. And you are that art. You are the success of Hero Press. So your homework, ask people for their stories. Stick out your hand and say, hi, where are you from? What do you do? And really listen. Don't say anything. Just listen. Don't comment. Don't advise. Don't suggest. Little questions to probe and, and help them move on. It's good. And then let them know you appreciate them trusting you with their story. So thank you. Thank you, Tofa. Um, a couple of links. We have, we can, you, you can be found at Hero Press Network and HeroPress.com. Yes. Are you on social media as well? Yes. Um, at Hero Press, pretty much everywhere. Uh -huh. Also at Topher One Kenobi, pretty much everywhere. Slacks. You know, I actually thought your name was Topher Kenobi for quite a long time. Yeah. No, my last name is not Kenobi. <laughs> no, never mind. Well, no, DeRose is a very fine last name. Yes. <laughs> um, so we have a little time now for some questions from the floor. If anyone has a question for Topher, um, quick show of hands, and I'll be able to get a microphone over to you. Yes, madam, over there. Hi, Topher. Hello. I'm Kel. My question is, um, if you're collecting all the stories of others, um, what is your story? How did you get inspired in getting started with Hero Press and curating all the stories of the people from the community? I will try my hardest to tell it quickly because it's a long, great story. Um, I was working for a company called XWP, and the owner of the company came to me and said, uh, I want you to do something special for WordPress. And that's all he said. <laughs> so I wrote back, I said, what is that? He said, that's your journey to discover. And so he, uh, he gave me a budget and told me to come up with something great. And HeroPress, there's a different idea. HeroPress was going to be on television. It was going to be all video. And we did a Kickstarter, and it failed, and it crashed. And I thought that was the end of it. And I rebooted it as a blog. And at, at that point, I was unemployed, and it was just a mission of love. I said, I just, I want to I wanna do this. I want these stories to go out. So we turned it into a blog, and after a while, Dave, the guy from XWP, wrote to me and said, hey, I like what you're doing. Keep it up. And, and it's just been, been a labor of love ever since. Another question? Yes, madam. Hi, Topher. My Hello. name is Allie. Um, what is next for Hero Press? Do you have any plans to do, to build upon it or to do anything different with it in the future? Yeah. Um, about a year and a half ago, my wife and I decided to grow it beyond just HeroPress.com and make a whole network of sites. And so we have a site called WP Podcasts, which is all of WordPress podcasting. Uh, we have a podcast called Hero, uh, Hallway Chats. Um, we have about eight sites now. And in December, I lost my job. And uh, the dream is to try to turn HeroPress into a job somehow. So I'm building a lot of content, getting a lot of, trying to raise traffic. And at some point in the future, I'll start asking the world corporations for money and uh, get some sponsorship and then do it forever, till I die. Hey, Topher. Hello. It's Naisha. <laughs> I am on the podcast with uh, Topher, Hallway yes, Chats. Yes, she's on Hallway Chats, my co-host. <laughs> um, I wanted to know, so I know we can contribute to Hero Press by writing and you know speaking on the podcast. Sure. What are some other ways that people can contribute to help grow your mission and grow your dream for Hero Press? 
Uh, there are several things you can do. Um, gain, help gain attention. Talk about it on social, uh, things like that. Uh, my love language is comments. If you want to comment on posts, I love that. It's rare. People don't usually comment on the essays, but uh, that's good. Uh, there's an email list you can sign up for. Um, if I get a, a suitably large email list, then I can attract corporate sponsorship and potentially go on doing that forever. Um, but yeah, just attention is one of the best ways. Highlighting it. Tweet about it. Blog about it. Anything. Do you have any more questions from the floor? Uh, well, actually, no, I, I had a question. Yes, sir. Was, so you showed towards the beginning of your, um, uh, your presentation a, a great world map with stories from all over the place. Yeah. I wonder, would, what sort of elements of the stories do you think vary most from place to place? And what strands are the most common? Because I, I think one, yeah. one of the really interesting things about these regional word camps is that we do get to see things from, we get to step back from our own worldview a bit and, and see more. And I, I imagine this, this great map of all these stories must mm -hmm. give you a very privileged position to see the way that WordPress and people are the same and maybe different all over the world. Yeah, I, I, have, I feel like I have a lot of special insight into the community. It's, uh, I feel tremendously blessed. There is no one on earth more blessed by your press than me, I, hands down. Um, things that have surprised me are, uh, I, I like people to speak to their peers. And so I'll come to you with my perspective of who you are, and I'll say, I think they're probably going to write to this other group of people. And they pick a completely different group. Um, I have several from people who have physical disabilities, whether they're blind or wheelchairs or whatever. And I'm like, oh, the blind person is probably going to write to other blind people about being in tech. They're like, no, why would I do that? I was going to write about being a parent in tech. I'm like, oh, OK. And so I think one of the things that surprises me is how, how often I'm wrong about who people want to write to and about. Uh, everybody's like, it's so so random, so interesting. That one of the reasons I keep doing it, I guess, um, it never gets boring. Everyone is fascinating. All of you, you're all fascinating. Thank you. I, do, I, I would commend a good, long, deep dive into the archives of Hero Press. Every story yes. is a surprise, yeah. and there are very many of them there. And in a way, they kind of chart some of the history of the WordPress community over the years as it's changed. Yes, I have some sequel essays, and I have several people who say to me, you know, I should, I should do another one because things are so different now. Yeah, yeah. Um, something that has surprised me is I, it posts every week, but I used to think everybody read every week a new issue. Let's go read it. And I was I, almost depressed to find out how few people read it every week. Um, people who love HeroPress are like, oh, no, I don't really read it every week. Like, oh, then why do I do this? But then people would come to me and say, you know, I don't read every week. But every now and again, a couple times a year, I get a little down about the world. I get depressed. People are yelling at each other. Everything's ugly. And I just go read 10 stories. And everything's better. Um, somebody from Automatic, who's in a position of authority, said to me, I'm kind of the mom of Automatic. People come to me all the time and say, oh, I had a terrible day at work, but I don't like my boss. I'm on support. Everybody yells at me. Thanks for listening. I'm going to go read Hero Press now. <laughs> and, and everything's better. And so I look at it more now as a, a library, an archive of our stories, and less as a journalistic publication that you need to rush out and read every week. And I'm okay with that. Your request is there for you anytime you need it. And like I said, there's almost 250 stories. You can just you can read for a long time before you run out. Thank you, Tofa. Thank you for your presentation today. And thank you for Hero Press. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.